Welcome to Scramble Game Show. Today we are going to do a special show, sort of like uh, a webcast. I'm going to use computer, uh, some graphics that I get from the com uh, computer network to show you a story. Uh, today's show is on a topic uh, we rarely touch on. However, uh, it's very important. Uh, I would like to uh, make this hour uh, meaningful for you. Recently, uh, I have uh, participated in a group activity uh, to do a protest. Actually, as you know, uh, not only myself, but most uh, Chinese Americans do not go out in the streets to do protest. Okay? However, uh, last month, there uh, was a uh, activity that they go to the New York City to protest. And I may show you a picture right now on my computer. Uh, let's focus on my computer. Camera three. Uh, here's a news release the group of people uh, sent out to invite people to participate in this uh, rally against resurgence of Japanese militarism. Japanese militarism is a term that perhaps most people, particularly young people uh, in America, hasn't really paid attention, sometimes maybe even never heard of it. But of course, people who uh, say born uh, through the war and understand that Japanese militarism was a big thing because it was Japan, through its militarism, invaded many countries in Asia, particularly China. And they sort of vowed to uh, conquer China in six months and then go on, take on the world. Now, fortunately, uh, because the uh, U.S. engaged in the war at the end. Of course, that engagement is induced by the fact that the Japanese bombarded Pearl Harbor. So it really is partly out of defense and partly to help the world because the entire Asia was under siege by the Japanese Imperial Army. So this rally against resurgence of Japanese militarism has an objective. And this rally is held on February 19, in co uh, sort of coinciding with uh, the visit of the Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe. This prime minister was just newly elected last year, and he is the right-wing leader. You might even say it's the extreme right-wing leader. Now, let me uh, uh, show you a few things that um, uh, what the protest rally say about him. Okay, let's see what I can. All right, well. Maybe at first just show this three lines. They, why they want to protest, say Japan should acknowledge and apologize for its massive and inhumane World War II atrocities. Two, Japan should stop its resurgence of Japanese militarism and its expansionistic policy. Three, the U.S. should stop its complicity and adopt a truly neutral policy toward the Diaoyu Islands. Uh, the Diaoyu Island, perhaps, again, may be a new term to many young people. It's uh, small islands that in the uh, East China Sea, very close to uh, Taiwan. Uh, in fact, historically, it's part of the Taiwan uh, um, you know, province. Anyhow, 
This is the, the press release. And of course, following that, there was a rally in New York City. Now, let me just show you a few uh, graphics or photos that are taken. So you see the, the um, um, rally is in the city. Okay, I can't see it too well, but I just you know, flip on few. And so you could see the people that is involved there. Uh, as I said, this group consists of 60, 60, oh, that's not a small number, organizations, the Chinese American organizations uh, in New York, that they organized this rally to protest against the Japanese uh, militarism, and particularly the fact that the, the ape, uh, Shinzo Abe is, is visit to uh, White House or to meet with uh, Obama uh, for the purpose of getting U.S. encouragement or perhaps even uh, endorsement for taking a aggressive policy. Now, Abe has always advocated few things that is part of this militarism sort of a uh, um, concept. First, he constantly deny the World War II history. Uh, deny that Japanese army has done these atrocities that every other country, the whole world, including United Nations, have documented, recognized. He, including the chemical warfare, germ warfare, including the Nanking Massacre, which is a major, major murderous act. The entire city was murdered. Also include the so-called sex slavery. They used to use a milder term called comfort woman. The imperial army, the Japanese imperial army, basically grabbed these women from you know, Korea, Philippines, or other places and make them as sex slaves to serve the army soldiers during the war. Prime Minister Abe said flatly, he says, there was no evidence of that. Okay, so for this Prime Minister to constantly deny World War II history, of course, make every country who has sort of been victimized by the uh, aggressive Japanese militarism very, very un angry. Now, secondly, this Prime Minister Abe advocate to revise its constitution, which is actually, quote unquote, saying is a peace constitution, okay, um, constructed right after Second World War when Japanese or the Japan emperor surrendered unconditionally. At the peace constitution, one major article is that the Japanese shall never, never have offensive military forces. They only can have defensive military forces. For very obvious reason, because the Second World War is such you know, tragedy, so many uh, people victimized, this constitution is rightly sort of uh, instituted. But Prime Minister Shinzo Abe wants to revise that. Further, he wants to spend more uh, budget 
to build up the military forces. Now, all of this protests have a long route traced back to the World War II, uh, plus these right-wing sort of uh, uh, movement in Japan, and some are subtle. For example, Japanese revise their textbooks and teach their young kids a different kind of history than everybody else in this world understood how World War II happened. Okay, so this recent activity that the Japanese sort of uh, uh, trying to uh, steal this island, it's called Delhi Islands, is really a good, clear, and dangerous example of the resurgence of the military, uh, the Japanese militarism. Dalyu Islands, in history, legally, belong to China. Granted, we all know there's China in the mainland, there's Chinese people on the island of Taiwan. There's internal sort of differences that because of the war, actually, thanks to Japan. Now, these islands, whether belong to Taiwan province or claimed by China, it's their internal affair. Now, how did Japan get involved it was due to the fact that when United States was given the administrative rights to manage Okinawa islands and so on, and including these uninhabited islands in the East China Sea. And that administration sort of ended in uh, 1972 when U.S sort of transferred the administrative right of these islands to Japan. Now, I'm not going to go into the motives or why and so forth. Um, obviously, there's some probably reasons behind. Whatever that is, but, but this transfer, first of all, is only the administrative rights. Secondly, it's illegal because without the consent of the owners of these islands. Because this background, now when Japan all of a sudden, recently, come up with schemes of taking, try to take ownership of these islands, first, they try to get uh, government to buy these islands through some private people claiming that the private people own these islands, they can be sold to, Jap to Japanese government, and therefore they take sort of a national ownership. Obviously, this triggered the protest from China and Taiwan, because in the past, during those time of in the 70s, when you, uh, when J China and Japan established diplomatic relations, the issue of these ownership actually was tabled because Japan trying to claim these islands and J China would not you know, give in. In order to get this diplomatic relationship sort of established, that both sides of leaders agreed in a sort of a uh, postponement of discussion. But now Japan is reversing that stand and aggressively, aggressively trying to uh, seize these islands. Now, that's the background of this, okay? Now, let me see whether uh, there's uh, certainly other 
uh, pictures of these um, uh, let's see this icon is kind of small and there's another one okay claiming Abe is a history denier a dishonest man and I would agree with that based on these things I just told you but what I told you is not from my sort of a mouth only it's from the Japanese there are Japanese people writing books talk about histories you know, as any country there are people honest even the worst country would still have honest people they write honest stories okay so when Abe is leading Japan now towards this extreme right direction and if the United States is either unintentionally or worse intentionally get sucked into this or encourage this I think that's unthinkable I think this protest although it's a uh, event happened in uh, New York City and there's a few hundred people only but I think that its significance is great just imagine during Second World War China United States our allies they fought together against the Japanese military uh, let me uh, show you some interesting photos that happen to be again uh, let's see uh, where are they now can I find it hmm. yes okay start with these people first this you probably recognize this logos behind these are survivals the pilots from the so-called uh, Doolittle Raiders Doolittle Raiders are pilots flying planes from United States to Japan as retaliation after Pearl Harbor was bombed and that flight of course those days it's a long flight that the planes do not have enough fuel for the plane to come back so often they are forced to crush land in Asia of course the closest place would be in China but China was already seized at least along the coast by Japan so many pilots crush landed in China had to be rescued and the Chinese people the military and the civilians risked their lives their whole family's lives the whole village's lives to rescue these pilots because if they were found out they were harboring a American pilot the entire village will be killed so let me show you how this uh, uh, the uh, f the planes I guess uh, I don't have a close shot but I would yeah this is the Doolittle Raiders when they're flying in formation uh, on a mission okay now let me then go back to this rally again okay now in this rally as I said 60 organizations including uh, many people who suddenly <laughs> old enough and lived through the war okay 
all right, this picture doesn't have any more significance than just that, again, is a protest. Let's see what else I have here. Mm. Uh, more protests, okay. Um, can you show my pictures when I flip? Yeah, uh, if you can show your, uh, your character, that's fine. So give me time to look for the next one, all right? Okay. Uh, I can't, I, even at a large icon, I still cannot see too well. That's the unfortunately part. Okay, let me come to this side. I've got plenty of pictures. Oh, there's more people uh, on the street being interviewed by reporters. Uh, almost, almost all Asian reporters in New York City were there including the Japanese reporters from their uh, TV and the press uh, agencies, okay? And uh, during this protest, a letter was presented to the Japanese consulate. Let me see whether I can find a copy of this letter. That'd be interesting. Let's see. Let's see. All right, uh, I think this is the letter, yeah, let me see. Either that or it's, it's a, a last version of the draft, okay. See, I can read it for you. February 19, 2013, uh, letter is addressed to Ambassador Shigeoki Hiroki. Uh, in fact, the whole rally is in front of the consulate building on Park Avenue, New York City, between 48th and 49th Street. Uh, it says, Dear Ambassador Hiro Hiroki, we, a large number of Americans representing all walks of life, assembled today outside of the Consulate General of Japan in New York, in New York to protest. One. Japan's failure to acknowledge and apologize for the massive and inhumane atrocities it committed during World War II. Two, Japan's violation of the Cairo Decl Declaration of 1943, the Potsdam Declaration of 1945, and the Japanese Instrument of Surrender of 1945, which limited Japanese sovereignty to Honshu, Hokkaido, Kyushu, and Shikoku and required Japan to return all other islands to their rightful owners. Number three, Japan's unlawful claim to the Chinese Delhi Islands. Number four, the resurgence of Japanese militarism, threatening peace in Asia and around the world. Okay. We respectfully request that you present this letter summarizing our protests to Prime Minister Shinzo Abe during his visit to the United States on February 21 to 24. Subsequently, of course, the Prime Minister Abe did come to Washington and did meet with President, uh, our President Obama. Now, interesting, this visit has a very low-key coverage from the press. I mean, a protest or rally like this in one city do not get mainstream media coverage is understandable. But a newly elected prime minister of a country's economy almost, almost 
second, but now it's slipping to third because China is taking uh, the position of the second place in the world next to the United States. And his visit has a very low key coverage. Now, there are a lot of uh, analysts out there uh, sort of trying to interpret this. Um, the conversation boils down to what did our President Obama and the Prime Minister Abe talk in private? What are the agreements? Because there's nothing out in the open. All these conflict is not mentioned. However, there is a um, meeting afterwards. The Prime Minister Abe attended. It's called CSIS Conference. Let's see whether I can find that. Okay. CSIS Conference. CSIS Conference. Well, let me first show some other pictures so you can watch the picture and I will find the okay why don't you flip this picture on with uh, with your character generator I will try to find the thing on my computer okay C S I S C S I S <laughs> The letter is so small the challenging uh, Christopher protests Well, let's see. That is okay. Let's see whether I can find it here. Well, wow. hmm, okay, well, I don't have luck to find this particular uh, news article, but I can summarize for you. Okay, let's do that. Sorry, apologize, not able to find that press uh, article. Now, these photos you just saw is the, uh, the rally uh, have uh, speakers. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I probably should uh, at least mention a few before I get into that uh, uh, talk that Abe g gave in Washington. Uh, let's go back to that picture you had. And that speaker was uh, Mr. Uh, Charles, Charles Levine, who is a New York State Assemblyman from Long Island. Uh, who is a speaker at the rally, and uh, Mr. Levine has been uh, instrumental helping recognizing some of these Japanese atrocities in a way. Uh, for example, uh, to uh, support the Korean, um, uh, the American Korean or Korean Americans to establish uh, uh, monuments 
in recognition of you know some of these victims. So, Mr. Levine was a speaker. Okay. Now, next speaker. I think. Oops, not this picture. All right. Let's see, next speaker is. Wait a minute. Where is next speaker? Can you find the uh, next speaker? I think it's the one with the book, author of the book. Okay. Well, this is not the next, but it is also one of the speaker. In fact, this speaker uh, spoke first in Chinese. Second in Japanese language, he made sure that it's understood by Japanese uh, reporters there. Um, how about next speaker? Let's see. Okay, good. This picture, although is you cannot see the author very uh, clearly, but. Um, um, this is uh, uh, his name is Baron Blot, okay, Daniel Baron Blot. Uh, he is the author of the book. Can we find a picture that shows the title of the book? I think we might have one, because when we took the pictures, uh, if not, we will have some other people showing. Ah, okay, I got it on my screen. So, uh, 